As of now, we'll be starting the previous lecture. Uh, I spoke about the landmarks of Maxilla and Mandible. The last lectures, I think, have a problems on the nets on communication between all the groups. Okay, can I the group at? I said, I think it all is hearing me, right? And see me. Okay, good. Now continue. The previous lectures, I spoke about the landmarks of Mandible. And some of these landmarks, I said, it's important for you for the denture preparations. Actually, here, importance for a denture preparations. If you, I can see some extensions of the bones or extensions of the attachments of the muscles, I can maybe have interfered with my denture uh, insertions or removing, okay? By this way, it should be known the normal anatomical landmarks and the abnormal one to avoid it, to not interfere during the denture preparations, okay? يعني أنا بالنسبة لي من أعرف أن هاي anatomical landmarks normally I can get benefit from it أنا راح أستفاد منها بس ممكن أنه تكون بعض landmarks هي تضرنا بعملية denture preparations فممكن أنه هي تدخل أنه ضد عملية insertion of our dentures أوكي فنحن هاي landmarks previously I spoke about the mental prominences if you remember it, and it's roughly triangular prominences according in the midline near the inferior borders of the mandible. يعني إحنا عندنا chin area. ممكن هاي chin area تكون نتيجة resorption of the level of the alveolar ridge. Okay. فممكن تكون قريبة نحنا عندنا من الدنتر. فهاي ال prominence during insertion of the dentures, during the movement of the muscles. Maybe interfere with our work. Okay, good. Mental foramen. This is I explained before, and now it's again I again I explain it for you. The mental foramen. It's what? It's the opening for inferior alveolar nerve, right? So, because if I have resorption of the ridge, maybe this mental foramen it's nearby our denture flange. You know what is meaning of denture flange? نحن الجوانب الحوافي اللي هي موجودة للدنتشر مالتنا. Okay? يعني الاكستنشن اللاترال البكل واللينجوال اكستنشن الدنتشر. فممكن انه يكون الاكستنشن مال هذا الدنتشر يطخ وين؟ يطخ بالنيرف اندينجز او الاكستنشنز مال الانفيريور اليفيال نيرفز فايش راح يكون عندك؟ البيشن كل ما يلبس الدنتشر هاف ا بين or numbness okay so you see the numbness leash numbness little extension you know extension my denture i see the pressure how the pressure is a bit numbness i see it but i'll nerve why is a bit and i know we should feel patient and do the clear of my talk and cheek okay will live beside the lia i said i'll end up pressure and i'm a hush raha syria and i'll end up to me uh my fool into most of them it's you know what the extension of leak rich راح نشوف هذا الاكستنشن موجود بالماندبل هذا الاكستنشن اذا اشوفه انا من الاكسترنال من خارج اوكي فنحن ايش المنطقه هاي الاكسترنال اوبليك ريج الاكسترنال اوبليك ريج شوف نحن اكو لاين اكستندد نشوف هذا الخط اللي يطلع من الخارج نشوف الصوره الاكسترنال اوبليك لاينز اوكي نحن مرات الريج مالتنا الليفلر ريج مالتنا it can be a result, right? How the extension, how the ridge, مالتنا الحافة راح تكون قريبة من الحافة ما الدنجر. زين. أنا إذا عملت عليها extensions of my flange to the denture, okay? فراح يصير شنو؟ راح يصير during the movement, maybe dentures will be dislodged during during the insertions. Okay? يعني أنا من ألبس الدنتشر من ألبس الدنتشر مالي راح تكون قريبة هذه فمن تكون قريبة والحركة مع المصل راح يصير dislodgement of my denture أوكي okay. نحن هاي الأناتومي أول ما يجي البيشنت صراحة من يجي البيشنت أنا رأسا إيش راح أعمل؟ راح أعمل diagnostic للأناتوميكال لاند ماركس أول خطوة بعدها راح أبني بالخطوة الثانية اللي راح تاخذون المحاضرة الثانية اللي هي الإمبريشن مالتنا أوكي okay. ما 
من اخذ الامبريشن فراح يصير عندي صوره كامله انا شفتوها انترا اورالي وشفتوها بالكاست راح اعمل الاكستنشنز مالتي الدنشر بشكل صحيح بلا ما يصير عندي اي بروبلمز بال انسرشنز اوكي due to the extensions of this uh, external oblique ridge okay this extensions normally it's not too high but because uh, you remove the teeth and you the resorptions of the ridge will become nearby this external is a new by it or new uh, of it or nearby it is have attachments of the muscle so during the movements of these muscles will be lead to dislodgements of your denture okay so uh, during the patient coming to your clinics firstly you should be diagnostic intraorally and I checked all landmarks that important for me, and maybe I avoid it during the insertions. And then I see the cast, I take the impressions. The impression will be taken in the next lecture. And during this, I have a cast, I have interview with the patient, or I have information of intraoral examinations. Now I know how I can extend my danger uh, in well design okay i design it with uh, well extensions without interfere without any uh, problems of the uh danger insertions okay you reach yeah from this point of view i have another one it's a milo hyloid ridge okay i can see it the same the extension external oblique ridge i have internal okay one and the my ridge you see it's here nearby the premolars areas from extended from posterior to the intra uh, premolar areas and almost is also his uh, nearby the attachments of the muscles of mastications and from this point of view i have external i have internal okay the genial tubercle you can see this is here in the midlines some extensions of the um, uh, bony extensions or elevations okay uh, you can see it here it's away from the teeth in kumshufa nahna away from the teeth but due to the resorptions sometimes it's become nearby my dentures sometimes during the insertions of the denture patient have a pain you looked no have nothing okay but these extensions may be sometimes sharp okay and sometimes, of course, maybe less sharp of the depending on the patients or depending on the actions of the muscles. And uh, during that, you should be examined well. During the insertions, the patient felt pain, okay? Or during the movements or mastications, the patient have a pain. You should be avoided this one. And of course, you should, I will explain to you how can we avoid some problems related to the uh, these anatomical landmarks if you interfere with your denture uh, insertions, okay? From this point of view, I can see uh, some of the anatomical markers. Maybe I get benefit from it. Some of them I cannot. Maybe I should be avoided, okay? And maybe sometime I sh should be uh, go away from it to be uh, clear for uh, me, okay? So. I should be now checked again. Okay, the genial tubercle, it's away from me, right? But due to the extraction of the patient from long time, sometime, the patient coming to you, not extracted, maybe recent, I mean, re extractions. Maybe it's away, maybe from 10 years ago, or have a previous uh, dentures and now coming to replacing the denture again. And you need to get more retention more stability of the dentures. From this point of view, I should be now checked because the bone, it, it, the resorption of the bone continue if the, uh, during the, the uh, denture insertions, what I mean. And sometimes, why am I speaking about the previous dentures? Because sometimes the patient wearing the dentures from long times, due to the pressures on the bones, these dentures also allow the resorption of the bone increase comparing with the teeth if it's available. From this point, if the denture have a problem in a previously, previous denture I mean, maybe make some problems of these uh, extensions of the bones or a resorption on the points more than another point. Make some landmark more prominence comparing with the previous 
one or or I mean the original one okay so sometimes the, or the previous dentures when you inserted on the bones during the times lead to uh, more resorptions or making the resorption in point more than another points so making some anatomical landmarks more prominence comparing with the original one from the mandibular foramen okay all of you know it and this is the from the insertion or in, in the inner surface of the mandible stramus and if you remember the mandible uh, consists of the two part the one of them it's a ramus another is a body the ramus the vertical one the vertical extension from the condyle to the uh, L shapes because the end of the L shapes and the body of the mandible it's the horizontal part of the mandibles of course all I think you know the mandibular foramen is for inferior alveolar nerve uh, openings okay a lingula hits a prominences of the bones in the interior borders of the mandibular foramen this is almost is away from our work but you should be noted also because it's a part of the uh, anatomical landmarks and many of the dentures is not interfered now the uh, it's uh, you know some of these sites you have some depressions or elevations and this is all of you it's interfering with your uh, walk okay so from this point of view i should be know the ridge when you the teeth will be lost okay all the ridge when the teeth lost the resorption is starting okay even with the denture this is what i need to reach and if i look now to the pictures if i look now to these pictures I see the resorption of the ridge, it's not on the same way. I see some points have like undercuts. What I mean undercut is uh, between the, the occlusal uh, level of this uh, mandible and the floor of the mouth, I see it's have a uh, like undercut extensions of the bones, you see, and from the uh, bilateral or anterior, I see two the extension of this uh, frenum. You see, frenum, how is it attached? Now this frenum has become too nearby to the level of the occlusal points of the uh, alveolar ridge, you see? So the alveolar processes and uh, residual ridge, the difference between, I explained before, uh, the alveolar processes when the teeth is available and when removing the teeth, has become uh, residual ridge. Residual is meaning the remnant, the remaining parts, okay? So the residual ridge almost, when I speak with the complete dentures, I speak about the residual ridge. And if I see here, it's not straight. You see, it's uh, irregularities between the bones. I see different areas uh, due to the different lines or times of extractions. And the different times of extraction lead to what different level of are resorptions from this point I should be point I put a point for me during the diagnostic of this patient it's ready for me or I have some interference to surgery for example to overcome some problems of the bones plus the soft tissue okay so now I go to the another retromolar part and if I see in the last area it's like pear shapes mass of soft tissues located at the posterior end of mandibular alveolar ridge. Okay, this extensions, it's meaning the ends of my dentures, yes, of course. But the problem of that, if I see the picture down, I see it have elevations here on the last, like the curvature to up. The problem where with the upper, the upper also have extensions of the bone down. If I am not control, the vertical dimension of my denture will be during the insertions of both dentures. During the occlusion, the interfere will be happened between the not only the teeth, but on the extensions of my denture where posterior. Okay. So I see the denture is go out due to the pressure from the wire from the posterior aspects, okay, of my dentures. So the retromolar part, it's a pear shape of mass 
of soft tissues located at a posterior end of mandibular alveolar ridge. The retromolar pad are important for these reasons. When the maxillary and mandible natural teeth are brought together, a plan of contact automatically from between the occlusal surface of the lower and the upper teeth, occlusal plane. I mean this uh, horizontal line, it's meaning this occlusal plane. The occlusal plane is the contact due to it contact of the upper and the lower teeth have this plane this is the name of this plane is a closely plane the positions of the pad remaining a constant even after a natural teeth are extracted the the pad are an excellent guide for determining the settings of the plan of the occlusion between the upper and lower denture teeth what i explained to you because when you have extensions, you have elevations at the end, because this is the angle of the mandible almost between the ramus and the body. So this uh, elevation may be interfering with the upper, or and it's important for you as a guide for occlusal plane. If I see now retromolar pad, where is it? And the occlusal plane, where is it? The point is about two-thirds of a way up the height of retromolar pad. So, from this point, pad serve as a bilateral distal supporting of mandibular dentures. And covering the pad with the denture base help reducing the rate of alveolar ridge to be resolved. How? What is the benefit of these ones? I explaining again in another way. Because have these elevations, and if I see this elevations no have contact, when it, so no have contact, no have force on it, but the force coming from where? From the remaining force from the teeth, right? So the forces already is less than another. Give you a point to not go the bone down in another area because the extensions of my denture to it. Yani, what I mean? Because the extension of my denture to this point will be not allow the denture to go down more in the another in the front area and lead to more resorptions. So it prevents more resorptions. It's covered, it, give me retention, a plus less resorption. Okay? Rahash Rahab al Arabi. نانا عندي منطقة ما يصير عليها كونتاكت معناتها هذه المنطقة ما حيصير عليها ريزوبشن بالكمية اللي تصير بيها بالمناطق الأمامية من هذا البوينت أنا إيش راح أستفاد الدينجر قطعة نط فليكسبل هيتس أ هارد ما تمن أكريليك ولهذا راح يصير فورس كلوزلي ما حتخلي الدينجر بالمنطقة الأمامية ينزل بالكمية اللي تخليها ليش؟ لأنه أكو سبورت بالبوستيرير أوكي؟ from this point of view, I can uh, use as a guide for closer planes, and I can get benefit from decreasing the resorptions and reducing overage uh, in the future for me. Okay, you reach the point. Okay, have another. You're not understanding any points. The buckle shelf. شوفون هذا buckle shelf. هاي المنطقة منطقة البوستيرير وين ريترومولر بات بالصفحة in the side in the lateral I see some area extensions of the buccal uh, area to the laterally okay so what is that this buccal shelf is a ledge located buccally to the base of the alveolar ridge in a bicuspid and molar region laterally the shell extended from alveolar ridge to external oblique line. I'll show you extension smaller. Some why, why it's important this shell. You know, it's a strong bone first. Second, when have a resorption of the ridge upper part, I mean, it's become more prominent because it's like it become a flat. Look how the direction of it, almost like this. When I have these resorptions, this triangular, it's become like a flat ridge. 
From this point of view, this shell extends from alveolar ridge to the external oblique lines. A buccal shell is uh, barely observable when the alveolar ridge is large. راح نشوفك هير مقابلنا من يصير resorption النقطة اللي حكينا عليها راح تصير wider. So it's become large. Okay, and increase in the size as a ridge resorbs. What I'm explaining now. Okay. The buccal shield is supporting area for mandibular denture, especially when remaining alveolar ridge is uh, relatively small. يعني نحن هذا الاكستنشن مال bone. When I have more bone, more area, more support, less bone, less support, my denture will be lost. Okay. So when I have strong bone, the strong bone, the rate of resorption. Not like the normal bone, you see. So, from this point of view, the, this bone will be give me more support if the alveolar ridge, my alveolar ridge, will be short. Okay, what's let? Akuai mushkila. This is lingual frenum, and sometimes this is abnormal attachment have a a short and strong this frenum. This is attached to the tongue. Not allow to moving of the tongue to move. Okay, the name of this tongue tie. Tongue tie is meaning you can interfere with surgery and removing to allow a movement more freely of the tongue. One to not dislodge my denture because uh, if I open it too much openings to more a frenum, buccally and lingual frenum. Of course, this is a decreasing of my dentures stability in the future. So this is lingually. If it's not normal attachments, I can reattach it again by surgery to remove it and make it shorter for allowing the denture more stable in addition to the tongue free movements. Okay? So I got more the frenum. This is what I say. It's the playbill and the buccal frenum. It's in the mandible are corresponding the positions parallel in the upper jaw. The same between the upper and the lower, I can see. The lingual frenum can see it on the floor of the mouth. Your answer is correct. Okay. When the tongue is raised, the lingual frenum is uh, presenting, approximating the midlines and extended from the floor of the mouth to the lingual surfaces of alveolar ridge or not alveolar ridge, it's a residual ridge. Okay, so the next sulci, the sulci risings and fall in the facial expressions and the tongue movements. The labial sulcus, I have also, I have buccal sulcus, right? Or I have lingual sulcus, depending on the area that locate. Sulcus, of course, you know it, he is lying as the base of a alveolar uh, ridge between the labial and the buccal of renum. With the buccal, the same, the extension of it. Look, why I am deal with the sulci or sulcus. The sulcus, I have soft tissue. As all of you, if you go to the mirror and you can see cheek, you're removing the cheek, okay? And the lips, if you need, you can see some of the soft tissues at the end of the mouth between the ridge and the lip or between the ridge and the cheek. I have these depressions. These depressions, the importance of these depressions, give me good, good extensions of my dentures. But if I stretch it, I see it is become decreasing on the length of this sulcus. Look, if I press on it by my finger, I can get more uh, sulcus extensions. But I should be take care because the facial muscles during the movements will be decreasing this uh, leveling of the sulcus. Inshallah, during the impression technique, I will show you how uh, you can take the impressions without make any problems with the sulcus depth measurements. Okay, so buccal sulcus also, you can see the same extension from posterior to the uh, aspect of retromolar part. Lingual sulcus, who are lingually uh, formed from the floor of the mouth and to the uh, alveolar ridge. Uh, floor of the mouth, you can see some of the muscles attachments 
and the tongues also because many of the muscles you attach to the mandible to allow different types of movements. So these muscles, some of its high locations, sometimes low locations. So the flower of the mouth, the anterior two thirds of the floor of the mouth is formed by the union of the right and left myelohyloid muscles in the midlines. The depth of the floor of the mouth in relation to the mandibular alveolar ridge. Okay, and this is a uh, constantly change due to the factors such as a myelohyloid muscles, contractions, tongues movements, and swallowing activities. The posterior one third of the lingual aspect or sulcus, sorry, area is called the retromyelohyloid space. This tells to the area of the shape by the uh, genoglossus uh, muscles. Look, the actions of the muscles and due to the formations of the floor from different muscles, this is, I should be taking care about what the movement of it during the registrations of my bridge. From this point of view, I'm not there with the muscles. I'm not need to know what is the name of the muscles, but I should be its actions because during the contractions of these muscles, you should be take action due to also affecting in my denture stability. What I mean, during the actions of these muscles, stretch, okay, allow the denture to go out, or maybe the flange, not extended more, just you can make it a little bit thick, so you interfere also by frictions of the muscles to allow this denture to go out, and this is one of the disadvantages of uh, thickening of the flange. So, the preparing of my denture, if it's staying on the oral cavity in good way, Okay, this is a good success in the future for your dentures. And also, less disadvantage for the patient, pain, for example, uh, discomfort for the patient, and allow the patient to use this denture in a state of uh, non usage and more resorptions and lossing of alveolar ridge in the future faster than the denture insertions. Uh, now, I finished uh, this uh, lectures. I will go to the uh, impressions. Now complete denture impression. Hi, second steps for me. Or I mean the first steps to know how I call to continue to check the impressions for my denture preparations. Look, now the first steps, if I know how I dealing with the anatomy, I can go to select a good impression material for my denture. This is the steps. If I go to take a good impressions for me, I can get a good retention and the stability to my denture. If I get a good retentions and the stability to my dentures, okay, of course, I get a good speech, good swallowing, good user, and a more success of your denture in the future. This point, it's important for you for each steps but the important from my aspect to not deal with any points or decreasing is what I mean. Decreasing from any point, the level of each point, what I mean. If I not take care about the impression, I lost my danger. Even the second steps after impression is good, but I lost the first steps. The first steps, if I make it in a good way, the second steps become good, the third one is good. Do not say it. In the future, I will correct it. No. Correct each step to go to the good uh, final results of my natures. So the impression, okay, the impression, it's a complete denture impression, is a negative registration of entire denture bearings area. Of course, stabilizing and the border seal are present in the denture small. What's meaning? Negative is meaning that you when take impression, you deal with the impression like the mouth, okay? But the missing part was the soft tissue, right? From this point, I should be take care about the registration way in good way that give me a good details like the mouth, even the soft tissue is not available. Good? What does this give me? Good stability, good retention, good ceilings. Preliminary impression is impression made from the purpose of diagnosis or from the constructions of a tray. Some of these impressions 
or the cast, the final cast, not the final, it's diagnostic cast. Then I take more details by another material to give me the final results. So the final impression is the impressions for making the master cast, the cast that finished my denture on it, okay? The master cast are used in constructions of my denture in the future. So I have two casts. One, I get it from the first impression. The second one, I get it from the final impression. So I have two types of impression. One, primary or preliminary. The second is final impression. So you have two impression, two different tray, two different material, okay? Two different results. Look, the primary also, the final another is different material, different what? A tray. From this point, I will go to select the material and the tray for you for each steps and in isolated way to know when I get a final results in good dentures. Now, if I go to see the impression tray, it's a device used to carry and control the impression material while making an impressions. Then the material Mali, my impressions material, I should be put on a tray, some things to cover it, right? So I have a stock tray, I have custom tray. The stock tray is the tray used to primary impressions. If I looked to this two tray, it's a ready-made one, right? It's a ready-made one. It's coming with the different sizes, different extensions to get a good or a good primary impressions for me. Good. The custom tray that you do it by yourselves, and this is to make the final impression. What I mean, when I take the impressions from the first step of a tray, then the cast that I get it, I make it a new tray on it. So this is tray again, I use another material, and now I will explain to you to get the final more details for this patient. So the first tray, I can use it for many patients, okay, because it's a ready-made one, but the custom tray, just I use it for uh, this patient alone. After that, I will remove it or throw it away. From this point, this tray, you have a metal, a non-metallic one. Or plastics tray, you can sterilize also, or disposable plastic tray. I can now, that use it now in the clinics, is almost the disposable one, but many of the dentists use it again, sterilize it again, okay, by the chemical sterilizations because it's not autoclavable. Autoclave, it's meaning the device using for sterilizations because the too much heat is over the 100, reaching 137. So maybe this tray will be uh, melted. So it's possible plastics, plastics one, uh, sterilizations, non-metallic, this is a non-metallic one, or the metallic, from the aluminum or stainless steel. The picture, the first, from the steel or aluminum. The second one, it's the plastics or non-metallic one. The type of stock tray also is perforated. You have a spaces. You can use it with the different material like alginate. Now will be explained to you each one, the material, what is, how, what is the benefit from this material, how you use it, where you use it, okay? Non-perforated or a plain one is using for impression compounds. And now it will be explained and I show you what is this material and what is the using for. Okay. From this point, the primary impression, what is the objective? To obtain the impression of whole of denture supporting area for each jaw and to recording the full extension of sulcus to obtain the impression in which a certain landmarks on edential jaws are recorded. So the primary impression, it's a benefit from it, give me the primary details of my patients, of my ridge, okay? So first, to record, get extensions, 
okay, to give me some landmarks of the job. But it's not final because more details I should be obtained from my new material. Why? Because now I explain each material have specific properties, okay? Usually I will take it in dental material too. You have some physical, chemical properties, reactions, and how is use it, how much the setting time of it, how you can use it, how you can manipulate it on it, okay? And some of this material I explain to you too. From this point, the primary alginate impressions, the stock perforated. Look, now the alginate impressions and these impressions tray, stock tray, yes? So I used a perforated one, why? Because this material, it's a flowable material, it's a flowing, okay? So during the insertions, if I need to remove it, you should be this material passing through these perforations to get the retention of my material with the tray, okay? So the stock perforated metal plastic impression tray, the form of a tray is a co uh, correspond to the form of the residual ridge as close as possible. And if you allow enough thickness for alginate material, two to three millimeters, the length of a tray can be extended with the wax to uh, correspond the morphology of denture bearing tissues at the close as possible. Look, now this tray, it's a ready-made tray. So sometimes I have sizes, also I have. Sometimes this tray, it's a shorter than that what I see in the ultra orally. Should be extended, okay? Or sometimes it's higher, of course. I go to change my tray to shorter. The problem where is the type of material. If this type of material or alginate material, okay, it's a flowable material. The thickness of this material should be not more than two to three millimeter to keep the material or give me the details. So if I put the tray, I see the shape of the arch is the same of my tray. It's a good, adapted good. But in some area, it's away too much from the tray. So what I should be, I should be put some wax on it to keep the thickness of material to two to three milli to this material because if I have a too thick material of my impression material, it's not give me good details because it's flow away, it's go away. You should be supporting this material, okay, by uh, adding of the wax. How again? Now patient coming to you, and then you put the tray according to the size of the patient. Then see it's good in some area, but it's not good in another area because have too much away from my tray. So this custom is not custom made. I am not making it, it's ready made. So it's good in the boundary, but in the middle, like the picture, for example, one, I see in the middle, it's away too much. So what can I do? No, have another tray. Should be I put wax on it, to increase the thickness of the tray and keep the thickness of my impression between two to three milli. This material, if it's I put it in the tray on too thick area, it's not registered my bone because it's to flow away. You see, how is it? So allow enough thickness for alginates and the length of a tray can be extended with the wax to the corresponded morphological of denture bearing tissues as close as possible. The height of it, because look, now the bone there is the sulcus area of you in the anterior is good. On the posterior, it's away. The thickness of this material, according to the properties of material, it uh, should be between two to three millim, okay? So the alginate not become too thick. If you're too thick, will be go away, flow. I mean, flowing away, okay? So if without, yani this material don't have force to push and staying for a long or length or more tall area. You should be put a, a wax on it to be near, make this space between the tray and the soft tissues of you, for example, the pellet that in the picture one, 
and two to three millim away to keep this thickness just for impression material. Otherwise, if it's away, the thickness of the material that put it inside the tray cannot be stand for a long area or away from it, for example, five, six millims. So you should be keep the thickness of material, of alginate material, between two to three millim. Okay? So if you are away, you should be put a wax, okay, to keep a space, just a small space for impression material to allow this material to register your uh, bone or anatomical landmarks in good way. Okay? As a jit ana, the patient, anatomical landmarks, shift the shape marriage, mali. بعد اش راح اعمل؟ راح اجي اشيك التريات. اختاريت السايز المضبوط على المريض. بس هذا الكاست تعرف انت يعني انت هسه البيشنت من جاك اوكي وعند الرج مالته ما تجي فيت مع الامبريشن التري صح؟ فانت ليش راح تختار؟ راح تختار التري اللي تناسب الارش بس هاي اكو مناطق بيها تنصح لها ريزوبشن كثير واكو مناطق بيها تكون مضبوطه المناطق اللي صار بيها ريزوبشن كثير راح تكون بعيده عن التري يعني حتشوف مسافه بينه وبين التري مالك زين زين اذا انا اخلي مواد ماتيريال مالتي مال امبريشن انا ما اطلع هاي الماتيريال مالتي لازم الثيكنس مالتها 2 الى 3 ملي ايش راح اضطر اعمل؟ ازيد اعمل تغيير بالشكل مال التري مالتي اضيف له واكس بالمناطق اللي بيها ديفشنسي اوكي راح اجيب انا حتى احط من احط الماتيريال مالتي مال امبريشنز راح تكون 2 الى 3 ملي وصلتك المناطق الاوكي ما يحتاج اضيف له واكس لانه هي اوريدي اتس جود تمام تشينج ذا شيب اوف ذا تري ذا ريدي ميد تري يو ميك ات لايك ذا كاستم تري يو بوت ات يو ميك ات تو ميك سبيسيفيك فور ذيس بيشنس فور اكزامبل تو نوت الاو ذا ثيكنس اوف ماتيريال مور ذان 2 تو 3 ملم تو جيف ذا ماتيريال ا جود كيميكال اند فيزيكال بروبرتيز اوف ات اف يو ار ان ا واي You maybe the material is flow, go away. Maybe you're not registered because it's away from the tray. So you should be add a wax in the area that you explained exactly like is it. First, now going to another type of material. The name of this material is a thermoplastic material. Let's go to see the shape of the material, okay, before I explain it to you. Good. Look, how is it? Now, this picture explains to you the different types of impressions. Look, the impression coming like a paste, okay? Like a paste, but it's thermoplastics material. I mean, it's dealing with what? With the heat. I can heat it with the hot water to become soft. After insertion with the patient, He get cold, he become plastic-like. So thermoplastics material. He's become hard if have cold, if you have a warm, okay, warm waters, for example, or more month, or you put heat on it, return back to become a soft, okay? This is the name of thermoplastics material. Look, the first pictures, The patients now coming for you, and you check the tray on it first before I take the impression. I should be check the shape, the depth, and everything related to the tray, right? This is the first. The second, I now use this material and softening by hot water. The third pictures, I loaded the tray with the impression compound material. You see, I distribute all this material on all my tray in a uniform shapes, right? Finally, I get a final extensions or final shapes of my, what? Of my rich, uh, this is the negative of my patients. Good, this is for upper, This is for lower. And I can see the steps of this material, how I recording of the cast. So 
If I return back the impression compounds, it's a stock non-perforated metal impression material, tray, sorry. Now the tray that I use it here is not perforated, okay? The alginate using perforated tray. I go to alginate to see the tray, how is it? Look, and now if I return back to see this now, it's not perforated, okay? So non-perforated tray, the form of a tray correspond to the form of a residual rich. This is what almost I do it with all type of the uh, impressions. Allow enough thickness of impression material. And if I see this material, it's thicker than alginate. The alginate is flowable more. And I can not put any wax on any area because it is almost thick material. Okay? Good. So, the finally, I get my uh, primary cast to go to make a custom tray. Right? So, when I get this, this impressions, I pour it with the stone, right? And then the stone become, I get this cast for me. This is upper and lower. So now what I go to do, I should be now change my tray to custom tray, right? So from this point of it, you should be make it what according to this patient, right? So the upper one, I make one, the lower one, I make it the two custom tray. Individually made from each mouth and because the material should be rich and stable, okay, and liquid relief at freedom attachments, and the freedom I should be relieved, and the border are underextended from the functional borders of the uh, prosthesis or antiseptic prosthesis that I have it, and the tray and its handle should not be interfered with the function movement of oral structure. Let me explain in another way. I get a cast, okay? I should be draw, what is this lines? This is the depth of my sulcus, okay? So what I do now, I select material for this special component or a special tray should be hard and stable. And I should be removed for the frenum be free. If I go to see the previous pictures of a tray, I see it's already have a space for the freedom in the first lectures, in the first picture, sorry. So here I remove it from my custom tray. Look, the border should be extended in the function borders of the antiseptic prosthesis because you should be make registrations of everything now, not like the primary impression, right? So the handle should be strong, should be not interfere with the movement. For example, if I make it short, maybe interfere with my lips or the tongue in the lower or on the ridge on the upper. So during the insertions, and remove it should be easy and should be comfortable for both the patient and the dentist. So, from this point of view, I can see the special tray, you make it, the first tray, it's you ready-made, it's almost you bring it uh, and ready for your patients.